Oh, interacting with friends, family or going on dates. These social interactions may drain us of all energy. At least this is something that happens a lot to me. However, however, I have found one thing, one technique that makes all the difference. And that is something I'm going to share with you here today. And it is a game changer. It has been a game changer for me. Friends, my name is Alexander Nielsen and I am someone that identifies himself as an introvert and a guy with the tad of social anxiety. And just to quickly break those terms down in the words of Susan Cain, the author of the book Quiet, The Power of Introverts, which has inspired me to this method that I'm now presenting to you. An extrovert is someone that likes to be outgoing, talk to people and, and gets energy from these social interactions. And then we have the introvert that likes the alone time and mostly feel drained when interacting with people. But we also have this spectra when the extreme points are introvert and extrovert. In the middle we have the ambivert person. Someone that's in between. And when it comes to the social anxiety part, it means that I, prior to the meeting, during the meeting and after the meeting, usually have a lot of anxiety going around. Maybe negative self doubting thoughts, judging myself, overanalyzing the situation and such. A week after having been with a friend, I can without thinking about it subconsciously start to judge myself for one thing I said during that meeting. The goal with this method is to remove this negative association. I don't want to do it because it's gonna make me feel bad. It makes us avoid the whole thing because we know if we socialize, it's gonna come with the package. It's gonna come with being exhausted. It's gonna come with the negative thoughts. And since we're smart human beings, since our mind works in the way that it wants to protect us, it's gonna say, don't do that because it only makes you feel bad. And you're gonna listen to that because you wanna feel good. And what it all comes down to, my method to make this a, a pleasant experience, is what Susan King taught me in her book. We have to learn how to be self-aware enough to know how much we have to give and plan accordingly. Let's paint a more vivid picture. Let's say you have this electric scooter with this battery pack. And this battery pack, in this case, is our social capacity, how much we have to give. And when we run out of this battery, it doesn't mean that we totally stop because we can still kick this electric bike, but it's just so much harder, but we can do it. But it, it will leave us sweaty, scarred, sword. And that's when the negative association will come to play. And the model of this electric scooter is not the same for all of us. Someone has a real quick one with fast wheels and like the super speedy bearings that would just roll like nothing else. While maybe me having a slower model, maybe my wheels are a bit worn out. But the thing is we can't compare to other models. We just want to go the distance and we just have to look at what we got and what we have the resources, the ability to accomplish. And this is where self-awareness comes into play because not only do you need to know your specifications, you also need to know how charged your battery is. Are you fully slept? Have you eaten properly? Are you in a very stressful situation right now? Self-awareness, taking the pulse to see where you're at so you know how far you can go. It's not gonna be a fixed number. I can socialize for 31 and a half minutes before it runs out of battery. No, we have to estimate, we have to look at the different var variables and factors going into the situation. Personally, as I'm currently going through a burnout right now, that means that my battery pack is drained so much quicker because it's just a, a symptom of what I'm going through. But this is only the first step. Then it comes to the second important step of dictating the conditions, taking responsibility to make sure that you don't run out of juice so you only travel half the distance and have to push the rest of the way making it a horrible experience. This means you have to learn to tell your friend, your date or whomever you're gonna meet that I can only meet for one hour but I can meet you and it's gonna be great. Time window, the place where you're gonna meet, how many people you're gonna be, and the things you can play around with, it all comes down to you. No one else is gonna save you. And this is something that requires a bit of getting used to. You have to embrace this mindset that you are in charge of your life. You 
dictate the conditions and you don't have to be specific you don't have to tell them exactly what you're gonna do if you have something else planned say no more I can meet you at Saturday but I'm only available for one hour we can go for a walk it's gonna be super nice but then I have something else planned and if that's something that's hard to you then make up a white little lie that you have some washing time you have to make a uh, homework or whatever and you can also be a straight shooter you can give them the truth that you've had a hard week you're stressed out at the moment and you only have one hour to give before you're gonna be plummeted it's not a yes or no deal when someone asks you if they can hang out with you you can say yes but and then it's up to them to accept the offer or not because what you need to know what you need to think of is that when you overextend yourself that's when it all falls apart an example of this is a dinner I went to a couple of weeks ago. It was like six, seven people there. I was there for one and a half hour and up to that one and a half hour mark, it had all gone great. We had laughed together. I felt that I was contributing and it wasn't too much up in my own head. Just an overall nice experience. But then, just like that, my battery level hit zero and I just, mm, I shut down. I was sitting there now feeling like man I can't I can't, I can't do this uh, I just want to leave and so I did I stood up and I said sorry guys this is my cue I'm gonna have to leave now I'm exhausted and that was fine but if I had pushed on for another half an hour I know it would have created emotional scars it would have made me sit there judge myself start to say weird things and just be weird but I saved myself because I was self-aware enough and I needed to exit I for one have started to go on a lot more tinder dates after realizing this that I don't have to spend three or four hours having this fine dinner or whatever I can just set up a nice quick one hour walk and then be done with it I limit the time window and then it's not a scare and also since I am the one that have dictated the conditions I can also extend that if it is so that today I feel that I have so much more energy to give then I can push it a bit further yeah, you know what I can I can be a bit late for that I have another half an hour to give however I also mentioned that I had a bonus tip please as we know sometimes our calculation wasn't right sometimes we just got drained like that that's when the micro pauses comes into play. Taking a little bit of alone time during the social interaction can be a lifesaver. Whether it's a bathroom break, making a fake phone call or just running outdoors to get some fresh air. I need to make a phone call. Sorry guys, I'll be back in five minutes. Move away, away from the herd, from the person you're meeting and just take a breather, meditate for five minutes, just be alone and recharge that battery just enough to get you through the night. And maybe you need several of these micro boosters. Throughout my working years, I've almost on a daily basis escaped to the toilet for some just meditation, power napping, alone time. We have clean toilets in Sweden. It's okay to sit down, put the lights out and just close your eyes and breathe for a second. Recharge me like that. So let's just lean back and summarize what we've been talking about here today. Learn how to be self-aware enough so you know how much battery you have, how far you can travel. Self-awareness is key and even if you plan for one week ahead, you have to think about what's gonna happen and kind of estimate what you've got to give. Get comfortable with dictating, adjusting the conditions, limiting the time window, the place where you're gonna meet, how many people you're gonna be. It's in your own self-interest, but it's also gonna make the other people enjoy the whole thing much, much more. Have a plan, a strategy for how you can microcharge your battery when you feel that you're running out earlier than you thought. Whether it's a bathroom break, making a fake phone call, or just running outdoors to get some fresh air. So this is the method that has made all the difference to me and I think it can be a game changer for you as well. However, have in mind that our range, the distance we can travel, it's not fixed. It is something we can upgrade. It is something we can work on by improving our social skills, by practicing a lot. 
because when it comes more effortless to us because we've done it over and over we can go further something I've first-hand experienced as I've been doing a lot of these uncomfortable challenges socializing with strangers pushing myself to do things that is outside my comfort zone but still within my battery capacity I have a lot of videos where I go through the different ways for how I have worked with myself to accomplish all that for one this fundamentals playlist where I go through my strategies for how to think about approaching strangers whether it's a girl or just some random person and do that so it's a positive experience see the smile is journey and I'm just enjoying every interaction today that's it guys that's all I'm giving to you today and if you liked it if it delivered some kind of value I would much appreciate if you hit the like button then I know that I did something right I wish you the most beautiful of days. I encourage you to go out there and face some fears, but do it within the battery capacity of what you have available. Do it in small baby steps. My name is Alexander Nilsson. Thank you for watching. Bye guys. You wanna come and play with me? We can do it for 30 minutes, but it's gonna be 30 beautiful, wonderful, exciting.